and they are still up. Well, at least this one. So thank goodness. All righty. So let's head over to our first game that we have to look at in that is the Steelers and the Bills. And why we have to watch this one is because Bills fans are not happy with Josh Allen, folks. It's unfortunate. Game one, a little lackluster. Only put up 16 points at home and they end up losing the game. That's really what set Bills fans off. Just losing the game. Now, we went into this week, week one, uh, you know, telling everybody, Steelers fans, Bills fans, hey, calm down, no worries. This was before the game was even played. Hey, one of these teams is going to lose. A good team is going to lose, unfortunately. Just like on Thursday night when the Cowboys had to face the Bucks, a good team was going to lose. It's just unfortunate. There was about four or five games from week one where a good team was just going to lose and there was nothing you could do about it because they had to face each other. There has to be a winner and there has to be a loser. Now, unfortunately, Josh Allen, this was not the time to have a loss, you know, coming off that huge, huge hype train from the 2020 season that we were a part of, and we were, you know, uh, leading the charge. We were the conductor of, you know, a hype train. Obviously, we weren't the only ones, but, you know, Josh Allen truly won us over, and we spent the entire offseason, all those months, just staring at those stats, gushing over those stats, and waiting till he gets back out on the field. And then he has a little bit of a, little bit of a lackluster performance overall. We talked about it um, when we broke down the game, but, you know, throwing 51 times in a game, something Josh Allen has never done. They ask him to do it here, game one, against a real solid Steelers team overall, offensively and defensively, and he comes up a little bit short. So we have to kind of investigate some of these plays right here. We're going to be looking at a lot of kind of third downs, and we're also going to kind of celebrate on the touchdown drive because it can't all be bad. We have to see. So let's see Josh Allen on some of these third downs. Why couldn't he pick them up? Why did these drive stall and all that? And let's just see if we should truly be worrying about Josh Allen because we looked at some other quarterbacks um, yesterday during our Wednesday film study, especially Trevor Lawrence. I mean, he was, whew, his accuracy was all over the place, folks. He was honestly maybe the worst quarterback that we saw from week one. And, you know, he's a rookie. You know, that's granted. That's given. That's to be somewhat expected. And we're not going to, you know, harp on that too much. But we have seen bad quarterback play in week one. Now, is Josh Allen this bad quarterback play, or did he just go against a good defense? So let's investigate that. The first play that we have up is the third down. Third and five on their first drive of the game. They got a real great punt, um, kickoff return that set them into great field goal position. Unfortunately, they weren't able to cash in seven points for it. So first play up here is 0-0, uh, third and five from the Steelers' 19-yard line, 13 minutes, 43 seconds left in the first First quarter, third and five. Josh Allen does not pick up this first down. Let's, in, let's, in, let's investigate. Why is this Josh Allen's fault? So here we go. Let's run the play. Here we go. Josh Allen in the shotgun. Drops back to pass. Looking for somebody. Buys time in the pocket. And the ball seems to have been tipped at kind of the line of scrimmage. Going to Stephon Diggs, which we saw, you know, plenty of times last season. And a huge reason why people may say Josh Allen will take a step back this season. There's two reasons, two thoughts, why Josh Allen will not live up to the height that he set up for himself last year. One is, you know, hey, they're going to lock up Stephon Diggs. And Stephon Diggs was really the only reason that Josh Allen was having success now that he has an A1 tier 1 wide receiver on his team. The other is the fans in the stands, the crowd noise. He's at home, so we wouldn't really expect that to kind of, you know, bother Josh Allen. So, you know, those two narratives are in play right here. Unfortunately, this pass was just tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it, uh, you know, he was going to Stephon Diggs, going to, you know, his playmaker. You got to give him credit for that. So, uh, that first uh, three and out, or that first, uh, Unfortunate not being able to pick up the third down conversion was not Josh Allen's fault. But now we're going to the next. What do we got here? Um, this is a three and out drive. So let's watch this three and out drive. Why did it go three and out? Why could they not pick up anything here? They had great starting field position at their own 37 yard line. So let's see what happens here on all these plays starting at first and 10. Now they're still up three, nothing from that previous field goal, three minutes, 50 seconds left in the first quarter. Steelers haven't done anything. Not a lot of pressure. Let's see what happens. Play one is Josh Allen passing the ball. 
and I don't know what the hell this is supposed to be. What is, what are you is he just throwing the ball away? I mean, this honestly could have been intentional grounding. Who gets intentional grounding by throwing over the middle of the field? So he escapes the pocket, escapes all that pressure, and then tries to throw the ball. And literally, there's nobody 20 yards within the vicinity right here. Um, so yeah, not a great ball right there. It seemed to be nothing open. We don't have the all 22 film just quite yet. That should be out by the end of this week, going into the next week. So our kind of film study should be able to get a little bit better uh, when we can watch all 22 and see if there was really anything open that Josh Allen just truly missed. So <clears throat> didn't seem to be anything open there. It's an incomplete pass. Now we're looking at second and 10. All righty. Let's see what Josh Allen does this time. Still in the shotgun. We got three wide running back motion on the play and it seems to be like a quarterback draw Josh Allen going up the middle and we did see Josh Allen fumble twice in this game and he didn't fumble a lot last season he fumbled a lot in the beginning got re and cleaned it up really kind of after like week four I don't think Josh Allen fumbled for the rest of the season after like week four but in 2019 Josh Allen was fumbling the ball a lot so we're kind of seeing it here Josh Allen does get out to some slow starts and we even saw it last season with the fumbling issues the turn over issues so maybe this is just Josh Allen's natural progression taking all this time off and being a little rusty coming out of the gate um, especially at home so that's not the greatest but you know it's not cause for truly concern I mean you know if you're gonna tell me hey you know, your quarterback's going to be bad for, you know, week one, maybe week two. But, you know, from week three on, he's going to be on the money. And you're definitely going to be competing for, you know, playoff spots and Super Bowls. I'd be like, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, no worries. I'll go 0-2 if it's guaranteed that my quarterback is definitely going to get better. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so <clears throat> that seems to be what Josh Allen is. You know, a little bit of, you know, first ba game back jitters. You know, first day back to school jitters, if you will. Uh, so that's something, you know, that we are going to have to kind of keep track of definitely this week. We'll see what happens next next week but um you know something to uh, keep in mind Josh Allen fumbling hopefully we don't see it too much more here he didn't fumble on this play I'm just bringing it up uh but here we go now it's third and one what do they call here what do they trust do they trust the running game up front on third and one against the Steelers defense or do they trust Josh Allen because we're gonna be going through some of these other drives on the fourth down call they had two fourth down calls why were they doing that and all that we're gonna get it into, into those plays as well but let's see third and one at their own 46 yard line what do they call here let's see they call a flea flicker. Josh Allen, plenty of time to throw. And then, oh, just unfortunately kind of uh, doesn't sling that ball in there to Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs was open, but he just kind of, you know, let air underneath this ball and it kept it in the air too long. And the uh, Steelers defender was able to make a play on the ball at the very last second. So, Josh Allen, you had plenty of time. You had plenty of room and time to step into this throw to deliver an absolute rocket to Stephon Diggs. Stephon Diggs, and he just kind of, you know, floats it out there. It's unfortunate. Ball got, you know, left in the air too long, but that was a great ball to Stephon Diggs. Once again, going to Stephon Diggs on these kind of do-or-die situations, the third downs where you need a completion to move the chains. Let's see if we can watch it from this angle one more time from the back angle to see if this really had, if this could have yeah, put it out a little bit more out in front, a little more zip on this ball, and that should have been complete. So that's on Josh Allen right there. Maybe a little bit lackadaisical on the throw, knowing that it was kind of open and he had time to throw. Didn't think it needed that velocity on the ball. So that is kind of on Josh Allen right there. Unfortunate. So, um, you know, three and out right here at great starting field position, give and leaving the door open for the Steelers. That was the narrative by this Bills team the entire game, leaving the door open. They were up 10 nothing at halftime, folks, and then it started to get to, to uh, 10 to 3, and the Bills weren't doing anything, and then 10 to 6, and then the Bills weren't doing anything, and then it's 13 to 10, and then 20 to 10, Bills still not doing anything, and then it's, it's over at that point. Two possession game in the fourth quarter, it's hard to come back from that so um so yeah josh allen on the three and out not great right there all righty next one up we've got uh what do we got we got back-to-back -back incompletions come on we can't be having back-to-back -back incompletions still three nothing still three nothing at the steelers side of the field at the steelers 44 yard line second and three in opposing territory he goes incomplete incomplete and the drive stalls come on what do we got here by josh allen let's see here we go second and three there's no reason why you can't pick up three yards on two plays let's see what josh allen does here who he's going 
going to and how he's looking on these th on these throws. So here we go. Play action pass. Dropping back to pass. Plenty of time to throw. Easy pocket right there. And Josh Allen a little off the money right here on the deep ball to once again Stephon Diggs. And I've got no problem with Josh Allen going to Stephon Diggs over and 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 over again. I would support that. I would definitely say utilize your weapons. We tell Zach Wilson of the Jets all the time, go to Corey Davis every single play. It doesn't matter. They, they will make the play. But Josh Allen a little off the mark on this ball, and it really wasn't that open. I mean, the you know, Josh Allen is kind of lucky that the defender wasn't even, uh, you know, wasn't able to kind of make a play at this ball last second. So, you know, Josh Allen trying to fit it in there. And like I said, you know, testing your weapons and, you know, trusting your guys 1v1, 2v1, 1v2. I've got no problem with that. Um, but, you know, it's unfortunate. And if you're going to make those decisions and, you know, stand by those decision you know, decisions that you make to, you know, throw that ball. I've got no problem with that. But, you know, we're going to, you know, take everything as a whole. And it's just unfortunate he was off the mark. Well, let's see on this back replay right here if we get a good angle just to really see if this was really off the mark or not. We'll get a great look right here. Yeah, just a little overthrown, man. Jeez. So, got to rein in that deep ball accuracy a little bit more. But now we get third and three. Let's see what Josh Allen does here this time. Uh, it's just a setup screen. And man, oh man, we talk about this all the time. I mean, we say, you know, we don't really want to watch screen plays because, you know, the quarterback, he doesn't, you know, do really anything. You just deliver the ball. But this time, Josh Allen doesn't even deliver the ball accurately on this screen play. That's the main. There's two things that you have to do on a screen play. Deliver the ball accurately, which, you know, usually happens. It's a, it's a catch, throw, and, you know, look and throw. That's all it is. It's quick. It's a one second total process but you have to be accurate with the throw so the receiver can catch and then immediately turn up field because the defenders are coming in since they know they see the ball thrown they're going to attack the other good the other thing that needs to be done on these screen plays is the blocking it's all set up by the blocking if they can block those initial kind of, you know, two corners on the line, the linebacker, the corner on the line, you're set up for success. So the throw has to be 100% on the money, and the blocking needs to get set up. And the blocking can't even get set up because Josh Allen just throws this ball so poorly, way low and way too much in front of these receivers. That's not where you put it. You put it a little bit behind the line of scrimmage or on the line of scrimmage, and you get it there, get it there with the velocity quickly, and you have to put it right in his chest, right in his hand, so he can immediately turn up field so Josh Allen right here on four and th fourth and three not looking good so once again the velocity and the accuracy is a little bit of a problem here with Josh Allen after coming off 69 percent completion percentage of 4,500 yards throwing last season so not great here on this drive stall now it's still three nothing still leaving the door open for the Steelers Alrighty, the next play we have up is all right, we got back-to-back -back plays right here now. All right, now we're in the third quarter. Still 10-3. to Bills, Bills, close the door on this Steelers team. They are in Steelers territory at the Steelers 35-yard line. This is where you have to truly put away the game. Score a field goal. It's a 10-point game. Two possessions. You're looking golden. You score a touchdown. You're making it 14 points. You're making, it ha making the Steelers have to put up two touchdowns. Cannot settle for field goals. This is the point in the game where you have to close the door and what do the bills do they go three third down and fourth down and turn the ball over on downs so let's see what happens here the play calling josh allen all that who do they trust let's see what happens so here we go third and eight third and eight from the steelers 35 yard line up 10-3 in the third quarter here we go josh allen in the shotgun play action pass plenty of time to throw doesn't step into it and tries to go to Cole Beasley, decently well covered by, seems like, uh, I think that was Minka Fitzpatrick. Let's see if we get another replay on this one. Yeah, it was Minka Fitzpatrick. We know this man's great. Uh, great lockdown safety. But here we go. Let's see where this ball was thrown. Here we go on the replay. Going to Cole Beasley. Minka Fitzpatrick not fooled by that double move. Cole Beasley trying to put a double move. And then Josh Allen throws the ball. Not the best positioning here by Cole Beasley. You know, Minka Fitzpatrick is kind of boxing him out in front of him. Cole Beasley has to try and dive over him to make the catch. And it's just unfortunate. Not really the place to go with the ball. Now, now that we have you know, the bird's eye view here, let's see if Josh Allen should have went anywhere else. This is the first down marker right here. It's only third and eight. So so let's see if any other route was open and if a, if he just missed a read right here. So here we go. We had three people going out for routes. 
Cole Beasley's well covered. You throw the ball right here. As soon as this other corner comes down to, uh, to guard, to help cover Cole Beasley with Minka Fitzpatrick, it's right here. Josh Allen hasn't thrown this ball yet, and he doesn't throw it. He's not able to really step into the throw either. The pressure really got to him. Um... Not moving well in the pocket and not being able to step in the pocket. It's unfortunate, but you have to make this throw right here. It's right here, and Josh Allen still has plenty of time to throw the ball. And uh, that's the completion right here. That picks up the first. That puts you down in the red zone. This other wide receiver, I believe this is Stephon Diggs at the bottom of the screen. This is very well covered. So there's one wide open route. Two contested routes, and Josh Allen chooses one of the two contested routes right there. That's not the greatest look right there. But they keep the they keep the offense out there on fourth and eight. Uh, Sean McDermott, Dermott, trust his offense, trust Josh Allen. I've got no problem with that. Take this shot, take this shot. You're kind of in, you know, that um, borderline of do we kick the field goal? Do we punt it? Do we go for it on fourth down? So I've got no problem with this decision. It is fourth and eight, which is a little, you know, you really don't see, you know, people going for fourth and eight unless you know it's you know one second left in the game and they need to score. They got to do something. You got to take the shot. But you know, just normal games, you know, situation. You don't really see people going forward on fourth and eight, especially having a seven-point lead. They go for that, but let's see what happens here. Here we go. Josh Allen drops back to pass. Pressure is getting there, and then once again, he's going deep, you know, fourth and eight, the third down, or the, yeah, the third down that we just saw. Um, was that second down? They, yeah, second down, he goes uh, deep to Stephon Diggs, third down, he does, you know, dink and dunk on the screen. It, it's complete, but, you know, testing that vertical, you know, uh, testing the defense vertically, I've got no problem with either, but maybe not the right decision here on this play. Triple covered, trying to go to Stephon Diggs down deep in the middle of the field. Uh, shorts the ball too, you know, you throw it, Stephon Diggs is trying to climb over these defenders to uh, catch this ball like Cole Beasley was and it falls incomplete and they have to get off the field so let's take this play one more time was there anything else open here should he have taken the deep route over the middle of the field yeah, really hard to see if anything was open at the time unfortunate it's incomplete pass Josh Allen can't really put exactly everything on it I don't think that was Stephon Diggs that may have been uh, Davis Number 13, definitely not Stephon Diggs. But regardless of who it is, it's triple covered, and it wasn't, you know, a pinpoint accurate throw where only the receiver can make a play on the ball. So Josh Allen kind of floundering out there. Um, and then we've got uh, one more drive up here. Here we go. Another, we're going to get another kind of fourth down, but this time it's 10 6. Here we go. Start of the fourth quarter. 10 6. Bills in Steelers territory. Close the door on this team, Buffalo. Please, Jays. So we get 10 to 6, third and three. At the Steelers 43 yard line. Let's see what they call here. So Josh Allen hasn't been getting it done. Now they're going to switch focus to the running game. Maybe the running game can have a little bit more success here because we can't rely on Josh Allen. And that's definitely nothing you want to hear from your offensive coordinator or head coach. So let's see what happens here. Third and three. Fourth quarter at the Steelers 43 yard line. Here we go. All right, they run the ball. Steelers pound them one yard short of the first down. That's Minka Fitzpatrick coming up big again. I mean, we got to get – can y'all respect Minka Fitzpatrick even more? I mean, he goes under the radar. What the hell is up with that? Um, people, you know, talk about Jamal Adams and Tyron Matthew and Buda Baker. But get this man in your repertoire. Get this man in your vocabulary, vocabulary player talking about, player narrative repertoire. Minka Fitzpatrick comes up and makes a huge stick right there to – bring up Devin Singletary one yard short of the fourth down, first down to make the Bills go for it on fourth and one and to get the turnover on downs. It's all Minka Fitzpatrick. Give the man credit. Look at this stick. Woo! Take out those legs. Yes, sir. Minka Fitzpatrick is the GOAT, folks. I don't care. All right, but here we go. Fourth and one now. Who do they go to? Who do they trust? Let's see. Fourth and one. Josh Allen, quarterback sneak. Why is that not the case? Why are you not running a QB sneak? We just saw in the Dolphins game, they actively took out Tua twice at the quarterback position to stick in Jacoby Brissett, who is bigger and beefier, to have him run the quarterback sneak. Now, Josh Allen doesn't have the problem that Tua has of being small and not big and all that. Josh Allen is what, 6'4", 230? That's a big, beefy man out there. Let that man QB sneak it. But what do they try? What what do they do here? A little bit of a gadget play that doesn't catch the Steelers off guard. So here we go, tight formation right here. 
got somebody in motion, and it's Josh Allen throwing the ball to the running back five yards sh five yards behind. No, it's ten yards. He's going to throw this one ten yards behind the, the line to gain. Folks, look at this. Look at this. He has to go ten yards on fourth and one. What sense does that make? Ten yards on fourth and one. Who would have thought? And the Steelers blow it out. They sniff it out right away, and uh, they turn the ball over on fourth and one. So they don't trust just kind of Josh Allen to throw the ball on fourth and one. They don't trust Josh Allen to run it up the middle on a QB sneak on a fourth and one. They don't trust their offensive line to just uphold a regular running play or a fullback dive up the middle. They have to go a little gadget. So... Not real promising signs of Sean McDermott, his trust in the offense, Josh Allen's arm, you know, carrying over from last season. So a real tough game overall here for the Bills. Truly, truly unfortunate. Now, it's not all bad, so let's see if we can find anything good. Let's go back to Josh Allen's touchdown drive. I believe he only threw one touchdown the entire game, correct? Correct. So let's watch this one touchdown drive that came real early on. Uh, second quarter, six minutes left. They go down and score the ball like 90 yards for the touchdown. So let's see what Josh Allen was looking like when, you know, he was kind of at his peak, his best performance, going down and scoring the touchdown, making it a 10 nothing game in the first half. So let's see what happens here. And let's see how Josh Allen is looking. Can we buy into him at all? Or is it all the negative plays that we just saw kind of, you know, overall what happened? So first play, they run the ball. It gets nothing. Here we go. Now we get Josh Allen. Here we go. Empty backfield. Five wide. That, now we're going to get something good. No, let's see Josh Allen sling this ball with five uh, wide receivers. Here we go. Drops back to pass. Pressure coming up the middle. Throws off of one foot, but it gets there to the tight end, Dawson Knox, and they pick up the first down. So Josh Allen, let's watch this throw one more time. I mean, he put it right on the money. Didn't set his uh, feet as he was throwing, but it didn't matter. That's the first down. We'll give him the credit. All righty. Now here we go. Next play up. First and 10, Josh Allen. Now he's got a completion under his belt. Let's see if he kind of, you know, takes off now that he's, you know, building a rhythm. Here we go. Dropping pack back to pass. Pump fake. Flag is coming in and uh, tries to hit. Uh, who is this? Stephon Diggs? No. Emmanuel Sanders. And he didn't have a great game either. I really wish Emmanuel Sanders really kind of, you know, showed out because we do, we are big believers in the man and really think he should be able to help out this uh, Bills team very well. Unfortunately, we get a holding play here. First and 20, Josh Allen dinks it down to Cole Beasley for about uh, 10 yards, making it second and 10 now, second and manageable. Josh Allen back, empty backfield. Let's see what he can do here. Five wide again. Here we go. <clears throat> Josh Allen dropping back to pass, and it's just a comeback route for about three or four yards, bringing up third and five, third and manageable. Here we go. Let's see what happens here. All righty. Josh Allen dropping back to pass, and he's able to find who is that? Woof. Gabriel Davis over the middle of the field, decently open. Uh, let's see if we get a replay of this because they put it in the small box. We get a flag as well. What the hell is going on here? All right, we got to get a replay of this one. 12 men on the defense there for the Steelers, so an easy first down. It was a completion anyway, so they're right over midfield. They're not going to replay this play? Unfortunate. We got to watch this one in the small box. How unfortunate. All right, let's see if we can watch this one one more time. Here we go. Let's see. Seemed to be, I mean, wow, that's a really well-thrown ball. I mean, really tight window right here. He throws it beautifully between the two defenders, and Gabriel makes a great diving catch to pick up the first down, and now they're at midfield. So that was a great throw, great catch. Now they're across midfield. Let's see what they continue to do here on this drive. They hand, oh, no, quarterback keeper by Josh Allen. It only gets about two or three yards, so brings up second and seven. All righty, here we go. In Steelers territory at the 34-yard line, Josh Allen, a comeback route to Stephon Diggs. There's also a flag. What's the flag? It's on the Steelers. Okay, so they pick up uh, five yards for the offsides here. Now it's second and two. Here we go, Josh Allen. Plenty of time to throw. Dumps it off to there. Stephon Diggs, a slant route for the first down. Now they're in the red zone. Let's see how Josh Allen is looking in the red zone. Got to skip very quickly here because we had a commercial break. Commercial break. Take a word from our sponsors. Sponsors, take it away as we fast forward 10 seconds at a time because NFL.com's website is very, very not up to our standards. <laughs> all right. Here we go. We're back from commercial. Back from our sponsors. Please buy all those products because we need to get paid. All right, here we go. 
Josh Allen in the red zone now. Two minutes left in the first half. Up 3-0. Here we go. And it's another quarterback keeper here by Josh Allen. It gets nothing. All righty. So, I don't know. These design quarterback keepers here for Josh Allen have not really been that great. When he just kind of, you know, naturally runs because nothing's open and the pocket's collapsing. That's where he really has strength. But, you know, going right up the middle, he doesn't really do it that. And he fumbles. So, I don't think Josh Allen should really be utilized as a dual threat quarterback. Just have him kind of use his legs like Patrick Mahomes just to kind of pick up the first down and whenever he gets in trouble to just escape the pocket. All right, then he goes down to Cole Beasley again. Just a dink off for about eight yards over the middle of the field. Brings up third and one from the eight-yard line, from the nine-yard line. Here we go. Smaller field, tighter coverage. Let's see if Josh Allen's going to be slinging in these balls in some tight windows. We get a tight formation. Now they go to Josh Allen, QB sneak up the middle of the field. Why did y'all not do that again? It just proved to work. You got about four yards on that play. Jeez, and then, you know, we just saw on fourth and one, they go that kind of 10-yard pitch in the backfield when you had Josh Josh Allen going up the middle. You've already proven he can. So why go away from that? Jeez, I got three yards on the QB sneak. Here we go. Josh Allen from the six-yard line. Plenty of time standing tall in the pocket. Avoiding a little bit of pressure. Has to throw it away. All righty. Here we go. Second and goal from the six-yard line. Josh Allen again. What do you got for us? Here we go. Another quarterback keeper. Gets about two or three yards, not bad. Now it's another third and goal. Here we go, third and goal from the three-yard line. Can Josh Allen finally punch it in? 27 seconds left. Drops back to pass. And then, boom, Gabriel Davis. I mean, wow, this man is fantastic. That man was looking great on this drive. Back of the end zone, real tight throw, real tight window, and Josh Allen slings it in there. Let's get a nice replay. Oh, we'll get a great angle right here. Look at that tight-ass spiral. Accurate as heck. Look at that. Look at exactly where it had to be, that small window was open right on the back of the end zone I mean sheesh that's what we're talking about so overall Josh Allen when the tighter coverage is there we he still can make those tight window throws the accuracy is still there so still some glimpses right here I really think we just chalk this up as kind of game one for Josh Allen kind of brushing off the rust and the dust I think he will be fine only time will tell, obviously, and we'll keep breaking them down on our Wednesday film studies during the week. But we got Josh Allen week two versus Miami on the road against that Dolphins defense. Another tough game for Buffalo right off the rip here. We'll see if they can take advantage of it, but I don't think we jump overboard on Josh Allen just quite yet. Some questionable play calling. Also, you know, you know, just unfortunate that Josh Allen couldn't move the ball at sometimes as well. So I get both sides, folks, but we'll see what happens next week where we have more evidence and more data to back up um, our claims of Josh Allen, and we'll see what he can do. But overall, not a bad performance week one, not a great one, and definitely not what he, you know, picking up where he left off last season, unfortunately. So we'll see if Josh Allen can get back into the rhythm of it, the full of it, the swing of it.